Welcome to Seven Pot Club. I'm Rob. I grow hot peppers. It's a beautiful early autumn day here in Minneapolis, with only a few more weeks for peppers to ripen before the inevitable killing frost ends our growing season. Today, I want to show you some of my favorite plants and peppers from this year's crop. The footage you're about to see was shot a few weeks back when the garden was at its peak. 2022 has been a challenging year, both for the garden and for me personally. A late start paired with hot, dry weather delayed growth of the plants. This greatly reduced the number of peppers we've harvested this season. This is my first new full-length video in over two months. This year, I've had to prioritize family, friends, and health over making Seven Pot Club episodes. But today, I'm back, ready to rock, and excited to lead you on a garden tour. Even with the less than stellar performance of my plants this year, I still have a lot of interesting things to show you. Before I kick off the tour, I'll take you on a quick lap around the garden, accompanied by my first new song in ages. Let's get started. First up, here's a Reaper Trinidad Scorpion Maruga cross in the midst of ripening. This pod appears more Maruga than Reaper. I can definitely verify this Limon from Peru is true to type. This Chinense is hot and fruity. Bleeding Heart Chocolate. I love this one even though I'm not a huge fan of chocolate varieties. Surprisingly hot. Here's one that's pretty ripe. Here's a nice Kang Star Stargazer Red. This is a cross of KS White Tie with KS Hornet. If true to type, it's shaped more like a tie. Ahi Cherapita in Quitos is a wild Cherapita grown from seeds gathered near the Amazon River in Peru. The pods appear to be slightly more oblong than the more domesticated version. Really good heat and flavor. I think Avenir may be my favorite habanero. It's a hybrid variety from Nigeria bred specifically for export. Here's a particularly gnarly looking Carolina Reaper. Purple Cacho White Leaf has really beautiful foliage. These purple pods will ripen to red. Here's a Trinidad Scorpion Butch Tea. Bolivian Rainbow is a very cheerful and aptly named ornamental. The pods do have a nice taste and moderate heat. C22 is a cross between Carolina Reaper and the Super Hot Beast from Semias La Palma. This variant has a small stinger. Another variant looks more like Trinidad Scorpion Maruga. 
Explosive ember is a really pretty ornamental. I'm sure it's feeling crowded out by portulaca, aka moss rose. The funny thing is, I didn't plant any of these flowers in pepper pots this year. They're all volunteers. Portulaca is a desert plant, and they really thrived in the hot, dry weather we had this past summer. Purple Pumpkin – Seeds from Exotic Hot Peppers Madre de Rios is a really nice small chinense from the Amazon rainforest, but it's a little larger than the average bird pepper. Puma is a visually stunning pepper that packs some serious heat. Seeds from exotic hot peppers. FP Fattest White. If you let these ripen long enough, they will turn almost pure white. Blue Christmas is a very cheerful ornamental with mottled pods. You can see that some of the pods are a little past their prime. I really should harvest and eat them when they ripen, but I love seeing the colors. By now, I think everyone in the pepper community knows about the Manapino from Matt's Peppers. It's a jalapeno variant with variegated foliage and pods, but they don't seem to like a lot of sunlight. Next year, I'll keep them in the shade. Capsicum rhomboidium is an ancient variety from the time before peppers developed heat-producing capsaicin. It's a tall plant with shoots that spring up around the base. A couple of weeks after I shot this footage, some of the pods were ripening. I tried one, and they are bitter with no heat, but such a cool plant. A living fossil. Mutant Candlelight, a desert adaptation with thin leaves that capture the maximum moisture from a dry environment. The pods are low heat and not that flavorful. I certainly grew a lot of ornamentals this year. Here's Aurora. I filmed it again today so you can see the ripening. These pack a little heat and are quite delicious. Venezuelan Purple Variegated, another beauty courtesy of Matt's Peppers. As you might expect, these pods turn red when ripe. Now, squirrels don't eat our peppers, but they certainly like to dig holes and bury nuts in the pots. Like in this reaper Spagliato. Spagliatos ripen to a peach color with purple highlights. The foliage is medium dark. These unripe vampire pods are pretty dramatic with their show-off striping. They ripen to a bloody red, but I don't have one to show you right now. So we've covered half the perimeter of the main garden. Let's cross the walk and check out the plants on this cart. Here's another undead variety, Dracula. Similar to vampire, but squat and fat with modeling instead of striping. Heat and taste similar to jalapeno. Seven pot orange yellow. Have I told you how much I love these? I almost never freeze or dry any of them because they are my favorite super hot to eat fresh. Jelly bean is a mini habanero from Peru. The plants are very prolific. They're a light ivory color when fully ripe. I didn't think that green scorpion long would ripen to red, but these did. And surprisingly, they're not very hot. Cool shape, though. Here's Starscream, not to be confused with the KS Starscream. This is a peach reaper scorpion cross. Very hot. Pig in Pink DD, a very nice variety. Maybe it's because I have color vision issues, but I've not seen one of these I would call pink. More like Pig and Peach. The Dream DD is supposed to ripen to purple and white, but at least some are ripening to red. Others look correct, but we'll see if those turn red as well. Here's Seven Pot Shiguanus Red, one of the classic Seven Pots. A lot of crosses that are called Seven Pot have very little Seven Pot DNA left in them. These OGs are worth preserving. Now, here's the pepper I've named Rob's Folly because it's a series of unintentional crosses. It started as a Mata Friday. The next generation looked and tasted like the Mata Friday crossed with Red Savina. The seeds I saved from last year are now producing these smallish orange pods, still quite hot and tasty. Here's another with a slightly different shape. And here are some fat boys. 
Here's Puria. It's a frutescence and pretty hot. I would say habanero level heat. Nice rich flavor that's sweet but not fruity. Will grow again. Cap 212 is one I've grown for many years. It's a wild chaucense. Like many wild peppers, the pod detaches from the calyx when ripe, and the ripe pods will fall off if you shake the plant too vigorously. Bulgarian carrot, another longtime fave. The ripe pods look like small carrots, and the thick skin has a definite crunch when you bite into it. It's unlike any other pepper. Plus, it's the hottest anima variety I've ever tasted. Now, we're going to dive into the smaller of the two main beds and look at a few of the plants in here. Charapan Amarillo, Chinense from Peru. I call this the big brother to the Ahi Charapita. Extremely prolific, even in an off year like this. Here's Candy Cane Chocolate Cherry. A sweet pepper, not hot. Variegated foliage and pods. Bird ahi is another wild variety. This one's a bacatum. These pods also detach when ripe. I love hot paper lantern. It's like a habanero, but with a milder taste. I never grow enough of these. Here's Aleppo from Syria. These are normally dried and ground into a spice. Mild heat, but distinctive flavor. I was gifted this plant by Griff from Twin Cities Peppers. Ahi charapita. The little turtle pepper. Many people love the taste and heat of these. Fewer folks like harvesting them. They don't fall off when ripe, but I think it's worth the effort. Now we'll look at a few plants in the adjacent larger bed. Of course, there will always be some reapers growing here. Here are a couple of nice ones. Trinidad Scorpion Long SR. With its elongated shape, it's one of the most distinctive looking super hots. Seven Pot Barrackpore is another classic seven pot from Trinidad. This is Ahi Russian Yellow. It's a really nice bacatum and very much like Lemon Drop. CGN 22795 is another wild bird pepper. This one is Capsicum Praetermissum and is hot with a smoky taste. Seven Pot Primo Orange is one of my favorites for sauce making. Very hot for an orange pod. This one looks more like a brain strain. As far as growing outdoors in Minnesota, ricottos are often late to the party. This Ecuadorian red pepper for hell is just starting to form pods, and it's the first week of September. But I look today a few weeks later, and here's one that might ripen before frost. The red Savina habanero was the Guinness world record holder for a hottest pepper from 1994 to 2006, even though it's only about 300,000 Scoville heat units. Mustard Juice DD is a super hot cross from Diego Drax. I got the seeds from Alex at Exotic Hot Peppers. It's slowly turning from green to dark yellow. Bootjalokia from India, popularly known as ghost pepper. I've read that super hot peppers were introduced to India by a British lord who brought them over from Trinidad. I love these farmer's jalapenos with their extreme corking, but I do wish they had a little more heat. Here's Seven Pot Rennie. Ahi Pineapple is one of my favorites. Very fruity with moderate heat. Seven Pot Jonah was the first Seven Pot variety widely available in the U.S. Lesia is a delicious Ukrainian sweet pepper with a very unique shape. Primatali. This plant was a gift from John at Red Ghost Foods. I really hope you enjoyed the tour. I didn't have time to show you every plant in the garden, but you got a pretty good overview. I have a lot more videos in production and planning, and I'm going to try and not make you wait so long between episodes. 
Thanks to Fishner for supplying their organic fish manure humus compost fertilizer to feed our crop. This is my fourth year using Fishner, and I highly recommend you give it a try. It's not an inexpensive product, but even a small amount can go a long way towards growing healthier, more productive plants. I've included affiliate links for Fishner and other gardening products in the video description. When you purchase using this link, it really helps our channel. And the beauty is, helping us doesn't cost you anything extra. Thanks for your support. If you enjoy our content and would like to see more, you can help us grow by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and tapping the bell to be notified when we post new episodes. Check out all our merch at sevenpot.club slash merch. If you'd like a free Seven Pot Club membership card and stickers, get the details at sevenpot.club slash card. And for even more Seven Pot Club, follow our daily exploits on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. For Seven Pot Club, I'm Rob.